गुड आफ्टरनून स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ टॉर्क स्लिप करेक्टरिस्टिक्स फॉर थ्री फेज इंडक्शन मोटर वी हैव डिस्कस द कंस्ट्रक्शन एंड वर्किंग ऑफ थ्री फेज इंडक्शन मोटर as well as the some important relation related to induction motor now we will discuss about the torque slip characteristics for the three phase induction motor as we know from our last three lectures discussion कि दिस इंडक्शन मोटर इज नॉन एज द एसिंक्रोनस मोटर आल्सो बिकॉज इस स्पीड इज ऑलवेज लेस देन द स्पीड ऑफ रोटेटिंग मैग्नेटिक फील्ड सो वी आल्सो कॉल इट एज एसिंक्रोनस इंडक्शन मोटर और यू कैन कॉल इट द एसिंक्रोनस मोटर और यू कैन कॉल इट इज इंडक्शन मोटर इट इज आल्सो नॉन एज द सिंगल एक्साइटेड motor because here we are giving supply to only the stator not rotor so that's the reason it is called the self oh sorry single excited motor it is also called as the self starting motor this motor starts automatically when the rotor and the torque produced by the rotating magnetic field and then the rotor will move there we are not using any prime mover here to start our rotor so the rotor will start automatically that's why this motor is also called as the self starting motor to discuss about the torque slip characteristics we have to know about the formula of torque and the mathematical derivation is still not part of our syllabus but we will use this formula so how this uh, formula comes here i will discuss in this slide in first slide you see this it is nothing but it is a equivalent circuit because we have seen this induction motor just like behave a transformer also the stator is nothing but the primary coil and the rotor is nothing but the secondary coil and here we have the air gap between these two so you see just like the transformer where we use the primary coil and then here we are using the secondary coil so this is and this type of the equivalent circuit we have discuss even we have discuss in detail when i was discussing about the transformer there so you also know this it is nothing but the input supply which we are giving to our stator this is stator we are giving the supply to the three phase supply to stator here so this is supply this is the resistance is the reactance part and then you know try to remember that i note was nothing but no load current i was uh, i note was the no load current so we have discuss about this also there and uh, in transformer it was around 2 to 3% but in our motor it is around 25 to 40% due to air gap and it has also two part remember again remember the iw or is the im iw is the uh, nothing but the active component of this current and it is the magnetizing current also this will go on the the rc which is nothing but it is produce the copper losses or you can say the core losses here and it is here to give the magnetization so this component here the whole same thing which we already discussed in our transformer case same is here then we will go 
the uh, due to the electromagnetic induction principle the voltage will induce here you know, because the this in, in air gap what will be happen we already discussed about this the rotating magnetic field will rotate here and your in these the conductors of rotors are stationary here so due to the relative motion between this there will be the induced emf and this e induced emf and then we have here the rotating current here and the interaction between these current and this rotating magnetic field there will be production of the electromagnetic torque and this torque the rotor will rotate here so this we are getting here this is the e2 dash so basically it was and uh, basically it is e2 it was the uh, voltage here the, the secondary part but why we are putting here as in the last class you see the s formula or we can the slip formula is nothing but synchronous speed minus the speed of rotor divided by the synchronous speed so at the starting the rotor speed is zero so s becomes one so when we are in the stationary position rotor in, in the stationary position then both are equal to but when the rotate will uh, when the rotor will rotate then what will be happen the s value is not one but its value less than one so uh, we have to put the value of s here and this is the uh, current again here i i2 dash and again dash uh, region behind to put dash is concept of this slip r2 is the resistance so there is no effect but this is the part which is the reactance part so it is related to flux so that's why if i am considering my slip component that's why i am putting here starting at the starting point when rotor is in the stationary position that condition it is equal to one otherwise it has some uh, impact on this x naught and e naught and i naught that's why we are putting is it okay from this we can see it's a very simple formula so this comes here and this one because in the uh, in yesterday class we discussed i wrote the formula for this uh, gap torque or you can say the developed torque that was nothing but the rotor input and divided by the 2 pi s is the synchronous speed if it is in the rpm if i am writing in rp s per second then it is a uh, small n here okay now I am putting 3 because due to 3 phase then the current is square so this value is coming from this and this R2. So the this is nothing but it's a very simple uh, way to write the formula here. This component comes here. Yeah, the input is very simple so I can write this. Is it okay? Because in last class we drive a formula and it was mentioned I think equation 4. No, that was the relation between uh, the current what we can say that was the relation if you see the last class part then there was a relation between uh, pg upon prc equal to 1 upon s so that formula you can use here also so from that this s is comes here so see the yesterday class notes where we have mentioned about this from this we get this formula and this formula we will use to discuss about the torque slip characteristics of an induction motor that's why i am discussing about this slide so see carefully it's a very simple thing we already discussed all the metals in transformer and it is similar to that and these equations is mentioned i am not discussing in detail because it is not part of our syllabus now the significance of torque slip characteristics which is on today's topic here so the torque slip characteristics of induction motor induction motor gives us the information about the variation of torque with the slip that is we are getting the information and we know the slip is nothing but it is the difference of synchronous speed minus the speed actual speed of rotor divided by the synchronous speed is it okay so when the induction motor is loaded from low load to full load it means there is no load it's the speed will decrease here you see when we goes from low load to full load in this condition the speed decreases and we know 
when the speed will decreases it means our slip will increase you can see from this formula again because we are going from low load to full load and that particular condition what is happening our speed is decreasing if our speed is decreasing you can see this portion will increase here so due to increased load motor has to produce more torque to satisfy the load demand it's very the behavior of motor can be easily judged so the motor behavior we can easily judge by drawing a uh, curve between the torque produced against the slip of the induction motor so if we are doing this one then what we have to do the curve obtained by plotting torque against slip from s equal to 1 it means when we will get s equal to 1 when n equal to 0 n is the speed of the rotor it means we are at the starting point to s equal to 0 it means n becomes equal to ns synchronous speed and this is called as the torque slip characteristics of a induction motor so you see this here it is nothing but you see torque slip characteristics of an induction motor see this carefully and we will discuss this graph here and i wrote the formula is here you can see uh, from the first slide i am saying my constant supply voltage v2 if our constant supply then e2 is also constant here because e2 uh, the e2 dash equal to s e2 so this is also constant so our torque is proportional to these parameters here as the slip r2 is the resistance this and is the reactance power so you can see that's why i discussed on this something about the um, equivalent circuit of a induction motor so how we we can reach at this particular derivation is it okay see this graph is very carefully and you see here and s equal to zero and this becomes only and when when the rotor is moving with the speed of the synchronous speed so that particular condition s becomes equal to zero and you see here s becomes equal to one when the rotor speed is zero here is it okay and see this graph is goes is the maximum point which we are representing by s equal to sm sm is the maximum slip here and you see this one portion is here and we are mentioning the maximum torque and the stable region it is the unstable region and this is the full load condition so the every point i will discuss and what is the meaning of these points so, so you see the oa here mentioning o is the stable region why it is stable i will discuss then a2 is called as the unstable region point a is the maximum torque you can see point b is the starting torque in this condition you can see this is the starting torque and it's a very clear from because here the n equal to zero that condition our rotors is in the stationary position so that's the reason to call is the station starting point and c c we are saying when the we uh, our motor is working on the full load so that is related to full load torque so what is the meaning of the, all these parameters i will discuss one by one in the coming slides so first is the low slip region it means i am talking about in this region this i am talking about this region because s is here zero and it should start from zero to one so i will discussing about this region you can see here s is very small so you see the formula this formula s is small it's a square is or no more slow uh, small so this term we will neglect here so our t becomes like this way you see this and r2 is nothing but it's the constant quantity is not variable here so we can we see here torque is proportional to our slip here so in the low slip region torque is directly to proportional to the slip now what will be happen if load increases so we know the speed will decrease and when speed will decrease then you know the slip because slip is equal to 
n s minus n upon n s so when n will decrease our s will increase and this in this increases the torque because this torque is proportional to s so if s is increasing then the torque will increase here so torque will increase and which satisfy the load demand because when we are increasing the our load so it's require the more torque so what we can say in this region our graph is the straight line so we can see it like this way this is the region we are calling this one is the okay now we have to move the high slip region it means we are here and now we are in this case high slip region and what will be happening in this region we will see here so in this region slip value is approaching is one it means our water speed is increasing and increasing and it is uh, moving near to synchronous speed so this value is large and this value is small here because s is important here so in this case what we can do we neglect the first term and write the second term and from this you can see our torque is inversely proportional to 1 upon s s is not nothing but is the slip so in the high slip region torque is inversely proportional to slip or hence our nature of curve is the rectangular hyperbola so what will be happen in this class uh, in this situation when the load increases then speed will decreases when the speed will decrease slip will increase here is it okay and when the slip will increase then torque will decrease so you see from the maximum point if we see the graph then from the maximum point our graph will decrease here but torque must increase to satisfy the load demand because you are increasing load here so the this should be here torque should be increases but torque is decreasing here is it okay you increasing our load the speed is decreasing and slip increasing and due to this reason our torque will decrease but torque must increase to satisfy the load demand so as the torque decreases due to extra load effect because load is require more torque so due to extra load effect the speed further decreases and slip further increases again torque decreases because torque is inversely proportional to 1 upon hence uh, s it means the same load acts as a extra load due to reduction in the torque product in the torque produced it means the speed further drops again the speed will drop here then what will be happening here because when i am increasing my load my speed is decreasing my slip increasing torque is reducing then again is the load uh, increasing so this simul what is happening basically its torque is decreasing and decreasing again and again so eventually the motor comes to stand still condition that is nothing but it it is the stationary condition so the motor cannot continue to rotate at any point of this high slip region just you increase your load your torque will decrease here but you know when we are applying any load that's demand to increase the torque so the extra load again decrease our torque so in this case the motor cannot continually cannot continuously rotate in this region it means what we can can say the torque slip characteristics has the two part one is we can say the stable region of the operation where we have the straight line and another is the unstable region of the operation where we have the rectangular hyperbola is it okay so now the question comes here ki which value of this slip the torque slip characteristics represent stable operation we we know from uh, 0 to our maximum value of torque the motor uh, will be work 
but after the maximum point to in the uh, higher slip side the motor cannot work we have seen here but the question up to which point so in the low slip region as load increases slipping increases and torque also increases linearly so motor but we know every motor has its own limit to produ uh, produce a torque the maximum torque the motor can produce as load increases is tm and which occurs equal to s equal to sn so you can see in this i'm talking about this point this this one is the maximum torque which is produced at equal to s equal to sm and sm is nothing but the maximum slip so the maximum torque that a motor can produce as load increases equal to tm and which is equal to in sm if load is increased beyond this limit then what will be happen motor slip acts dominating because torque is now becomes inversely proportional to one uh, slip and due to this unstable condition motor comes to stand still condition at such a load hence maximum torque which motor can produce is called the breakdown torque or we can say it is the pull out torque you must remember all these terminology because it is important when we will do some numerical problems okay so it means what we can say ki range from s equal to 0 to sm is called is the low slip region and it is the stable region where the motor always operate at a point of in this region and we can see the every point of this region but when i am going from the sm to s equal to 1 that is the high slip region and here we have the rectangular hyperbola and it is called as the unstable region of the operation and motor cannot continue to rotate at any point of this region is it okay so what will be happening here at s equal to 1 it means our n becomes equal to 0 and n is nothing but the speed of a rotor so this is the condition of the start so motor produce the torque which is called as the starting torque that's why i am representing with this in uh, that curve v is the starting torque now i want to see when my motor will rotate then what will be the full load torque so when the load on the motor increases the torque produced increases as speed decreases and when the speed will decrease then the slip will increase so the increases torque demand is satisfied by drawing motor current from the supply try to understand this point because when we are putting our load then the torque produced increases more torque we require and if you have the more torque then speed will decrease and that's that's why our slip will increase here so the increased torque demand is satisfied by drawing motor current from the supply is it okay the load which motor can drive safely while operating continuously and due to such load the current drawn is also within safe limit is called full load condition for the motor it means whatever uh, current you are the load which the motor can drive safely while operating continuously and due to such load the current drawn is called within the safe limit and this is the condition of the full load condition when current increases what is happening why and we are talking about the full load condition here when current will increase you know the temperature will also increase due to heat losses here and the safe limit of current is that which when drawn the continuous operation of motor produces a temperature rise well within the limit it means we have to take care about the what type what value of current we are taking because we have to take care about our heat losses which uh, will produce here temperature also 
so we have to take care about this particular point also and such a full load point is shown on the torque slip characteristics is as a torque full load so you can see this point in this graph is here we are representing this so we will see what will be happen after this point we will see also here so the interesting thing is that the load on the motor can be increased beyond point c till maximum torque condition we can increase our torque beyond point c because it can increase up to maximum point but what will be the problem we have to see here due to high current and hence high temperature rise there is the possibility of damage of winding insulation because there is the rise of temperature here so if motor is operated for longer time duration in this region which region region from full load torque to maximum torque that is from c to b in that condition if we are we are able to achieve our torque up to maximum value but if we are going to maximum value that the problem is there is a possibility to damage the winding insulation you know? so that is the problem here but motor can use to drive load more than full load producing a torque up to maximum torque for short duration of time so generally full load torque is less than the maximum torque we can see from our graph we have given enough evidence to explain that this concept so the region o to c you see o to c region this one o to c this region to full load condition allow motor operation continuously and safely from the temperature point of view while region c to b c is the full load condition to maximum torque condition is possible to achieve in practice but only for short duration of time not for continuous operation of motor otherwise our binding insulation will be disturbed there so this is the difference between full load torque and the maximum or you can say the breakdown torque the breakdown torque is also known as the stalling torque so i think you are able to understand the concept behind the torque slip characteristics and its impact when we are talking about our three phase induction motor if you have any problem then you can write me on sham at the red gwc dot ac dot in thank you